Sketching polar graphs. Use a calculator on those in bold. What I'm going to do is first graph in the calculator so we can talk about what it looks like and then try one by hand. I'm going to do this with the four basic types of graphs, the three main types of graphs, and then maybe we'll leave them by themselves. You will be required to do this on the Unit 9 test. You simply will. The AP test, again, is a matter of open question, but you will need to be able to do it. You will need to be able to do it in order to find polar area in a lot of cases. It's helpful. So here I go. I'm going to graph it in bold. I'm going to graph this one in bold. And I had a nice, nice thing. I'm not advertising it really. It's not free money or anything. Wabbit, e M U, emulator, Wabbit emu. If you just Google that and then you Google TI84 ROM, I'll write it on the screen. TI84 ROM and Wabbit. I mean, that's going to be up there the whole time. Emu. Emu later. You can find these files pretty easily. Download them. They're safe. Uh, you can download them on your phone. If it's an Android phone, and turn your phone into a graphing calculator without having to go to Wolfram. Anyway, I don't have an Android phone. I just carry my calculator everywhere I go because I'm cool. So... We want to hit mode. We're going to go to this polar. P-O-L for polar. In case I didn't get to it in the video for 9-1, I don't think I did. You can also do parametric. You usually don't need to. As much as you will need to think about this in polar. Enter. I hit. I went over to polar. I highlighted it. I hit enter. Second quit. And if I go back to y e equals... You should be following along on your own calculator. Now I see instead of Y's, I have R's. I have R's. Two cosine theta. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat that now it's theta for us? That's what this corresponds to. Um, rectangular, parametric, polar sequence. We didn't really use the sequence function. You can. You're not really expected to on the AP test. So again, just to make sure you're in radiance mode, I'm going to go back to mode one more time to make sure you're in radiance mode. Okay, y equals 2 cosine theta. Zoom 6 for standard. And you see this little guy. I'm going to zoom in a bit just so we can see what's going on here. So now if you look at the window... You notice that theta max, theta min, zero, theta max, that is actually 2 pi, if you don't recognize it. X min, negative 10, X max, a lot of this stuff should look similar. So I'm just going to decrease these to 5 to give you a better view of things. I'm pretty sure that'll work for all of our examples. Yeah, sure. If it doesn't, we'll just go back and readjust it. It's a lot of people in class need more practice, so graph one more time. Okay, now, it's distorted. It's distorted. And this is why it's important to recognize that I've highlighted it. I've highlighted the fact that we, we're dealing with here, I know it went away, I'm so sorry, Our circles. These two are going to be circles. Because of how the window works, it's distorting the fact that it's a circle. It's in some sense trying to keep everything too weird. So you use this graph to give you an idea. Now it's giving you a theta, a two, and a zero. And as theta increases, I go around the circle. Getting to the point one comma one. Getting to the point two comma two. Sorry, not getting to the point 2 comma 2. Getting to the point 0 comma 0. You need to be able to read both of those as zeros. Back to negative 1 comma, or 1 comma negative 1. So it's not giving you the polar coordinates. It's giving you the theta and the actual rectangular coordinates. So the idea is when I go to graph it, 
the way I would think about this, I'm going to make the tick mark, boom, boom, two, and it's a circle centered at one comma zero. Okay. You can mark things on here if you want. That's um, one comma one. The origins on there. That's one comma negative one. Let me get back to there. This is a circle centered at one with radius one. Nice. All right. Now, if I was forced to do this value calculator, here's the idea. Theta is the dependent variable, but unfortunately, we want to think about this as. Um, I'm going to do it down here. R comma theta. And again, it's because I like doing R first. If you like doing theta first, that's fine. But I'm going to measure theta first. Let's try zero. It's a normal function. Zero, when theta is zero, sine of zero is zero. Five times zero is zero. How about pi over two? When theta is pi over two, R is, I'm oh, sorry, sine of pi over two is one. Five times one is five. Let's try theta. Sine of theta is zero. Hmm. So I'm looking at this table. When the angle is theta, my R value goes nowhere. I'm at the pole. Alternatively, whenever you see R of zero, you know you're at the pole. R equals zero is the pole. I just talked about that on the previous slides. Um, pi over two, five. So again, you can go one, two, three, four, five out and rotate it pi over two until you get to here. Or you can go rotate pi over two and we're counting one, two, three, four, five. If you're taking my test, I expect to see some notation that it is five away. You could call that point. Um, zero comma five. However you do it, make sure a sketch shows key points like this. And then when I go full over to pi, I'm back at zero. So we're kind of thinking about this motion. And the reason you want to memorize that this is the formula for a circle, blank function theta, number times sine or cosine theta, and so you can just go from this to making a circle. Now I'm going to struggle. Uh, I'll see you struggling. That's fine. It's not fine. Okay, that's the best I'm going to do. Okay, it looks kind of more like a circle than this potato looking guy. That's it. That's all I expect you to be able to do. Know that it's a circle because it's a number cosine theta, positive number cosine theta or positive over sine theta, and just do your best attempt. The reason you don't want to do a point over here is guess what? That has a messy angle to get to here, okay? These all have messy angles. You can try sine of pi over six. It's one half. Sine of pi over six is one half, so it should be uh, five halves. 2.5. So when my theta is pi over 6, which is somewhere over here, that should be at 2.5. I don't know if that looks right to you. I would not say to worry about it. I would memorize that this should be a shape of a circle. I really would memorize if I was expecting a 5. If you had to do this and then make your best guess every time, it would be very, very hard. It usually does show up on the free response somewhere. Rose pedal curves. A little rarer, but even cooler. And again, if you can't visualize this, I'm sorry. I maybe should have done a better job for you. No, that makes the inside green. These functions are the same. They're both rose petals. Number, cosine, multiple of theta. Number, sine, multiple of theta. And it's going to do something really cool. Oh, maybe I should graph that for you. Uh, you have to turn it back on because it shuts off automatically. You know why it shuts off automatically? It's interesting. It uses the same exact operating system as your real calculator. 
It really does. So the real calculator has something in its operating system that says shut me off after so so time. This calculator has that same thing programmed into it, even though it's clearly not running on a battery. So there's no reason for that to be in its code. Basically, this guy doesn't know he's not a calculator. Anyway, really quick, five, sine, theta, boom. Looks more like a circle. Not really like mine. I don't care. That's fine, guys. Don't stress out about it. Okay. Three, cosine, two, theta. It's bold. I'm only going to do this one in the calculator. Ready? The first time I saw that, my heart sung. Womp. Beautiful. It's like a clover function. One more time. I'm going to change it and then change it back. Watch how the calculator is sketching it. Watch as it moves across the screen. It will show you how theta is mapping in here and how theta goes all around the world. Ready? Boom, 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 boom. Do it a bunch of times. It's impressive. So what we should notice here is that each time the pedal gets one, two, three, out, one, two, three, out, one, two, three, out, one, two, three, out. Each of the pedals is length three. Okay, we call these pedals. I know, it's very romantic. Um, in the BC class today, someone asked, why do we use polar? It's the same reason we use parametric. I think I said this at the top of the video. This die does not pass the vertical line test. Way doesn't pass it right there, right? It hits like eight times. However, however, it is a function in polar because every theta has only one R output. Mm, that's not true. I'm sorry. For each pedal, that's the key part. For each pedal, every theta has only one R output. And that's a key idea. No, 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 I was right the first time. I'm not going to re-record this. So, sorry. Every theta only has one R output. This was a different theta value than this. Okay? Even though it's the same X value, different theta values. It's hard to picture. I'm sorry. Anyway, here I go to sketch it. So what I noticed was that I was... I guess I'll use green. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, that's going to be bad. Sorry, it's not really scaled right, you know. But it's just a sketch. It's okay. What did it do? Something like this, I think. Yeah. I like looking at that. I think it looks cool. So that's a rose petal curve. And I would like to see a notation of it straight away. 2 theta is kind of controlling how many petals it has. 2, so there's 4. It's 2 times 2. It's going to be confusing. Don't think of rules. Know that the 3 means each petal is 3 away. Okay. Without the calculator, not in bold. So here I go. Let's use pink. I'm going to use a much larger table this time, so get ready. You might want to do it on the side. I think you guys have some room there on the margin if you printed it out. If you got it for me in class, BC people. Um, zero. Now let's think about this guy. It's a multiple of three, so I'm going to use angles that have a multiple of three in the bottom. Okay, it's going to be nice. Okay, when theta is zero, we have sine of zero, sine of zero is zero. I'm at the pole. Pi over six. Three times pi over six is pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one. So I'm at a radius of four. So at pi over six, and you're just trying to try to do your best 
at making a pi over 6 angle. So it should be about a third way through the rotation. Pi over 6, I'm going to be 4 out, right? I went 4 out and then rotated pi over 6. Just do your best. I know I sound like, I don't know, is it big-headed to say I like Bob Ross? Like I sound like Bob Ross, but... And then at pi over 3, pi over 3 times 3 is pi. Sine of pi is 0. I'm back at 0. So this is going to create this whole pedal here. Like that. Okay. Let's keep going. We want to go all the way to at least pi. It's usually a good rule. I don't know what happened. Okay. Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. 3 times pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 2. Negative 1. Negative 1 times 4. Negative 4. Uh-oh. Negative radius. Real big pain. However you want to do it. I'm okay. Pi over 2 rotation first. Go ahead. And then we're counting backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4. That got me to here. Label the tick marks. It's fine. Or count negative 4. Where it would have been on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then rotate pi over 2 in a counterclockwise direction, slamming it down to here. Okay. Now at pi over 3, I'm at the pole. That's going to be important to keep in mind. The next one you would hit is 2 pi over 3. Told you I would need more space. I think I'm even going to run out now. I'm sorry. Uh, 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 times 3 is 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. So, going this range of motion between these three values of theta, as I move to pi over 2, I'm down here. As I move to 2 pi over 3, I'm back here. So what this is going to do is going to brush this whole pedal for us. So I kind of went out, down, back around. And here's why we're going to need two more values, everybody. I'm really sorry. Hope this comes out nice. Well, I grabbed the whole thing. But I can move this back. Ha ha ha. Is it funny or is it sad? I don't know. Ooh, look at that. I can just grab this by itself. Neat. Oh. All right. Next one, 2 pi over 3. Then comes 5 pi over 6 before we get back to our grand finale. 5 pi over 6 times 3 is 5 pi over 2. Oh, no. 5 pi over 2 is so hard to think about. All right. Now that we got that winding out of our system, 5 pi over 2. How many rotations is that? Pi over 2. 2 pi over 2. Okay. 3 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2. Wasn't that bad. Okay. You could always just subtract off 4 pi. Or... All right. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. So just count it out. It's okay. So 5 pi over 2 in sine. What's the sine along here? It's 1. 1 times 4. We're back to 4. I'm sure you're so surprised. So 5 pi over 6 is an angle like this. Is that a rhyme? These are the questions of the ages. I think it's more like that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Out. Oh, that's gross. Sorry. Bam. Look at that technique. And then, let's get all the way to pi before we say our night-night. Sine of 3 pi. Okay, 3 pi. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Sine is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. So this leaf is also tracing back like this. Now, you could argue that you should check pi over, uh, uh, what would be next? 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is 7 pi over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Negative 1, we're back to negative 4. Guess what? 7 pi over 6 down here 
it would be negative 4. It's somewhere over here. No, I'm sorry, 7 pi over 6. It's right back here. Now you're just going to retrace the whole curve again. We're back at the pole. Everything's working out nicely. So again, the reason you're going to go and memorize what's on the next page is so that you don't have to worry about if you're missing something. If this is odd, there should be three pedals. If this is even, there should be four. If you have a hard time memorizing, I would not waste my brain cells on this. I would go back to 7-1, sorry, 7-6, and memorize the elementary series. They come up much more frequently than, hey, graph some polar stuff, okay? Here we go. Oh, for good measure, let's graph it. On, it's hilarious. Four, sine, three theta. Oh, it was so much faster than us. Uh, I cry every time. Well, you know, it's a computer. It can do it. Cool? I know why this one looks fatter. It's, again, distorted. The calculator's done. It should look symmetric. There should be three pedals. Beautiful. You won't always have the calculator check. You need to be able to do it by hand. All right, these two are both limousin. Now, I think that's about right. <laughs> This is called a sedilla, not in French. I don't think it's called a sedilla in French. It sounds way too Spanish. Um, the idea is that this is pronounced like an S, limousin. I don't know. Mr. Tompkins apparently had famously called this a lamicon. Nathan called it the butt functions. Maybe Tompkins called it butt function. I don't know. I can't explain what other teachers do with their time. You know what I'm going to do? Oh, no, don't look at that. Well, you can look at that. You know, I don't know. Oh, wait. I can't get my face. I'm just going to reset. All right. Um, the idea here... The idea here is that we're going to, again, these two over here are different than the lemniscate. Okay? They're importantly different than the lemniscate. So we're going to graph this one we're using our calculator. The calculator over here. A limousin. It will look like a butt. Sorry, everybody, if you're offended by me saying butt like a hundred times. I'm trying to get blocked by the school filter. You know, one day I might ask in class, does anyone know why this is blocked? Because I'll forget that I did butt like a hundred times in this. And you guys will tell me, like, Mr. Levin, you said butt like a hundred times in that video. You knew what you were doing. I'll be like, I really don't know what I'm doing. That's the secret to being an adult, guys. You never really know what you're doing. Womp. Okay, sorry. I got overexcited about something. So, 2 minus 3 cosine. 2 minus... So just overtype whatever's in there. No, not 0. That's a, such a common mistake. And I totally did it because I'm exhausted. It's 619. I got here at 530 this morning. I've been at school longer than 12 hours. All right, theta. No, don't do that. Delete. It's hard to type on this thing. Cool? Cool. Maybe it'll get flagged because I'm doing this. I'm pretty sure this is not TI's best thing. I'm saying I'm pretty sure TI doesn't look like it. And now you know I need to call it a bet. So sometimes limousons have what's called an inner loop here. Sometimes they don't. Okay. You all have to be able to distinguish it a little bit. Sometimes. Don't worry. Don't worry too much. You can, again, do this with graphing. No one will judge you besides me about whether it has a loop or not inside. No one will judge you about whether you get it perfect. Be ready to do it with the calculator. Be ready to use this on the calculator. These are section questions they love to ask on the calculator section. Anyway, so it looks like that. What do I notice? This is out one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty much out five. How can I tell it will be out five? Two plus three. Why two plus three? This is minus three, Mr. Levin. Oh, well, allow me to tell you. 2 plus 2 minus 3 cosine eventually will become negative 1 and it'll be a radius of 5 
When will cosine become negative one? When theta is pi. Pi angle five radius. That's why it's out by five. Why is there an inner loop? Well, cosine of zero is one. Sorry, cosine of zero is, yeah, one. One times negative three, two minus three, negative one. So that's sort of what's making an inner loop. Don't stress out about the inner loop. Do the assignment, come talk to me. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. I'm so sorry about that. David was distracting me. Blame David. Okay, so some other tick marks. This is one, two, up, one, two, up. Mm. Because again, what angles are these? Pi over two, uh, three pi over two. Wow, I'm really right. All right, here we go. One, two, up, one, two, down. That's not good. One, two, three, four, five, this way. Dot, 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 dot. We were able to deduce just by looking at the four basic angles. That's what's so nice about having uh, just a normal theta inside. And it will always be a normal theta for Lamasong. Not, uh, you see now, Limasong. Limasong? I don't know how to say it. I have fun saying it, and that's what matters, guys. Butt shape. Sorry. Um, I'm not really sure if it includes the pull. I'm just going to try to sketch this inner loop as best as possible. Womp. Not good enough. Womp. There's also cardioids. You could all say this is a heart shape. That would have been so much nicer, Nathan, if you're ever watching these videos. That would have been much nicer. Okay. Now, the big question that's on all of your minds. What if, Mr. Levin, what if I didn't have the calculator? What if some crazy lunatic asked me, asked me, oh, I said axed, so uncultured, asked me to do this without a calculator? Well, I would say, calm yourself, and let's make a table. What are some values I'd like to plug into sign that are easy? Zero, good. Pi over two, let's not stress out. Let's not worry about pi over six, guys. I'm not in the mood. Pi, three pi over two. Going the full rotation for Lamasson is important because you're going to get all the way back. You need the whole, it's a circle type picture. I hope I don't stress you out by saying that. It's circle-ish. It has a full rotation to it. Do you see what I'm saying? Whereas the, well, this had a full rotation too. Yeah, but it finished its full rotation in pi. That's important. This guy, each of these is more like a rotation of pi over three. It gets back to the pole. So anyway. When it, theta is zero, sine of zero is what? Zero. So theta equals zero, this axis, one, two, three. I'm right there. Three. Theta equals pi over two. Pi over two, sine of pi over two is one, three plus three. Oh no, it's so big. One, two, three, four, five, six. I fit it in. All right. You could also go pi over six and then rotate it out pi over two. The reason most people are taught to do angle first is because it's easier when you're doing functions. Obviously, I can do it both ways, so I'm not really hindered by that. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying real talk. Uh, you should be able to do it both ways too, probably. It shouldn't be like, I don't understand what you're saying when you say do radius first. I'm saying go one, two, three. Oh, I didn't write them down. Sinus. Zero plugging in, sine of zero, zero. Three. Pi over two, three plus three, six. One, two, three, four, five, six out. Rotate pi over two. Or rotate pi over two, count six up from the origin. Pi. Hmm. When I plug in pi, I would get negative one negative one is definitely going to include make it sorry make it three times negative one three plus negative three zero. definitely getting to the pole in that case three pi over two 
sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. I'm sorry. It is negative 1. 3 times negative 1, negative 3. 3 plus negative 3 is also 0. I messed up. That's why I freaked out. Pi. Sine of pi is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. I am so sorry. Sine of pi is 0. 3 times 0, 0, 3. 3 plus 0. That one's 0. They can't both be 0. Sorry about that. It's just like in real life. I make mistakes on the computer. All right. So this included the poll. So very sorry. This one I have to do over. So if I had been doing it right, there would be no dot there. There would be no dot. I didn't really say it in slang. Pi. You could go to pi and go 1, 2, 3 out to make a dot. Or you can go 1, 2, 3 out, rotate, pi. 3 pi over 2. Rotate 3 pi over 2. Don't go anywhere. That's what that means. 0. Or, alternatively, if you're starting with r, oh, r equals 0, I'm at the pole. So the idea is to make this look like a but Yes, I know. Ha, ha, ha. And this is the order it's going. It's like a parametric. But shit. You have to heart. Or a butt. I, I don't know why Nathan says this. Psychology. Okay. This one doesn't have an inner loop. Let's check. Why doesn't it have an inner loop? Kind of because the radius is never going to become negative. If the radius becomes negative, there won't be, there would be an inner loop. Okay? It'll mess it up. On. That's our old one. Now, this one I have to change the window for. Hold on to your horses. 3 sine theta. It's already saying sine theta. I'm just going to increase the y max to 6. Oh, uh, no. I want to do everything to 6. Because I want to keep it rectangular. So the window is not distorted even more. Because you can lie to yourself pretty good with a bad window. Womp. See? No inner loop. Heart shape. Let's stick with hearts. Last one. Oh, thank God, it's bold. Now, it's bolded, but guess what, guys? There's no button to make this R squared. So what are you going to have to do? I'll give you three guesses. Three seconds. Three, two, one. So R obviously equals plus or minus the square root. I'm going to square root both sides. That was the spoiler. 2 theta. So lemniscate is a fancy word for a figure 8. I first learned this word not in polar coordinates because I never took a class on this. I'm not trying to explain a brag. But during a book, in a book, by Vladimir Nabokov, which is really good. Called uh, Panin. Really beautiful book. Panin. There's no vowel there. It's just a Russian name. The book's not in Russian. He wrote it in English. Nabokov was a genius. Best writer in the 20th century. By far. That's a theta. Okay. Mr. Levin, Mr. Levin, the square root of 9 is 3. Great. You can take the 3 out, but the sign stays in. Oh, no, not Excel. Not Excel. That was... Sorry. All right. I just have to graph one of them. I can use symmetry to argue what the other one will look like. I think. Square root is hard to see on this. Wow. Second square root. Again, please do this in real life. I know you're really happy that there's an emulator... I'm sure you're happy that your phone can turn into it, and now in class you just be like, oh, can I use my phone? No, you can't. Nine, sine, two, theta. Close, close. Make sure the parentheses match up. 
Knowing that the three comes out is helpful to know what will happen here. I know I don't have to adjust my graph, I mean. Womp womp. Now, guess what? For then this gate, the negative half won't matter again. Like, watch, I can grab the negative half too. And this is where I get jealous of inspires. Even I suffer from inspire jealousy because they have a copy and paste. They can literally do control C like you do on your computer. Copy. <gasps> do nothing. So notice your graph has little lies on it. Oh, I never finished the story about Lemnus Gate. Lemnus Gate is a figure eight shape. Now the spoiler's clear. So it's actually going to be a radius of pi over of three when my angle, oh, I should have out more. When my angle is, anybody? Anybody? If you're not going to answer. Oh, wait, sorry. Figure eight. A lemon skate is a figure eight. An infinity sign. It's beautiful. So. What was this angle? So if you're thinking pi over 6, you may or may not be right. What would make this value 1? What would make this value 1? It would be pi over 2. When this value is pi over 2, I'm sorry, pi over 4, pi over 4. I can't do math. 2 times pi over 4 would be pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then radius is 1. So that's an angle of pi over 4. Do your best. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm butchering it. He's dying on the table. Alright. The great. This is also a distance of 3. Don't stress out. Stress out now. So sketching out polar graphs. These are the ones you want to have memorized. Okay. These are the facts you want to have memorized. At least for the unit 9 test. It's very helpful to know all of this. R equals D cosine theta. R equals D sine theta. If it's a sine, it will have Y axis symmetry. If it's a cosine, it will have X axis symmetry. For the reasons we talked about earlier. R is X cosine theta. Rose petal curves. Cosine, X axis symmetry. Lamassons, Limassons. Limousson. Don't pronounce the S in French. That's not always true. At the end, it's always true. Uh, R equals A plus B plus B cosine. Cosine, x-axis symmetry, all three. Okay? Whenever it's cosine, it's x-axis symmetry. Whenever it's cosine, there's x-axis symmetry. Use that fact to your advantage. It's going to be really important for areas, polar areas. Sine, always y-axis symmetry. It's the same idea. I'll underline it. I care about you guys having good notes. Y-axis symmetry. Sine, y-axis symmetry. Sine, y-axis symmetry. May have an inner loop. It'll have an inner loop when this can work out to be a negative number. Now, if you're not good with trig, that'll be hard to figure out. When will it include the pole? When this can work out to be zero. Okay. Because cosine, you know the range of cosine, you know the range of sine. So you know the biggest R can get is A plus B for both of these and A minus B for both of these. Okay? Is that true of these things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's true for Lamasson. Here the biggest R can get is D. R is less than D, bigger than zero. R is less than A, bigger than 
Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I already said that here. A is the maximum R gets. D is the diameter. Memorize these things, guys. Memorize these things. This is confusing if you think thinking R is the radius. I know. How far I am from the axis is the diameter, though. Okay? It's because if we go back to our circle picture, that's to the center of the circle. That's why the diameter is this. But the furthest we got from the pole was 2. Okay? All right, this is just something to memorize. I don't know. Study it, put flashcards, 